Uh, first, uh, uh, let's talk about the anterior hip joint. So, let me change the design. Okay, please. So this is the curve probe. So when I pull the probe, I don't think you can recognize it. There's everything looks very unfamiliar because this is a curve probe. So um, first, when we put our probe on the patient's uh, patient's hip, we have to recognize several important structures. Uh, first, uh, at the anterior part, uh, there are ear source muscle and uh, uh, sartorius. So now, in this plane, where is the sartorius? Sartorius is over here, and then the one below is the ear source muscle. Okay. And if you move your probe more medially, you are going to see, okay, the ear source muscle actually can be divided into source and the iliacus. So when we move our probe more distally, you are going to see the tendon of the iliopsoas muscle over here, and then it will insert on the laser, laser trochanter. So here we have already seen that this drawn structure is the human head, and the, the what above is the iliopsoas tendon. So then I trend, change the direction of my probe to let uh, the direction parallel to the axis of our anterior hip joint. Then we are going to see a septabulum, labrum, iliopsoas tendon, and then the anterior uh, hip recess. So if the patient has effusion, you are going to see uh, this area is uh, distended. And if you want to do the injection, you position your probe in this plane, and then you insert from the distal part to the medial part. The muscle is over here, iliopsoas muscle. Now in this plane, we are going to see several muscle groups. This is the sartoris, this is the rectus femoris, this is the vestus in the medialis. So let's go through uh, this plane. If we move our probe more medially, we are going to see the muscle group over here, sartoris, rectus femoris, and the vestus intermedialis. And then if we move our probe slightly possible, you are going to see a butterfly structure. This is the uh, tensor fascia lata. This is the sartoris. Because those muscles originated from the anterior superior iliac spine. We are going to see the butterfly structure over here, iliacus, source, and then it will pass the hip joint, the joint over here. So, you know, sometimes we have patients with anterior snapping hip. The anterior snapping hip, the Iliac source muscle will rub against several structures. Like this is the most common one, anterior inferior iliac spine. So in this view, we can ask the patient to flex and extend his hip, his hip flex, and then his hand to see the gliding of the iliac source against the anterior inferior iliac spine. So we know what structure connected to the anterior nuclear is like. The structure is the uh, uh, rectus femoris. So this is the tendon of the rectus femoris. So now we change the direction of our probe. And in this view, you are going to see the tendon over here. This is the indirect tendon because it's going to the acetabulum. But if you move the probe aside immediately, you are going to see this is the direct tendon. 
anterior inferior is uh, the right hand and insertion over here. Okay. Because uh, D is not mature, so you are going to see some uh, epiphysis or some cortical irregularity over here. And this is a lateral hip, a late anterior lateral hip. Okay, now I'm going to uh, introduce the medial muscle group. As the medial muscle group, first, we have already seen the structure with taxation over here. This is the femoral artery. So, later to the femoral artery is the uh, femoral nerve, and then you see the femoral vein. Nerve, artery, and the vein. And then the muscle structure separated by the neuromuscular ground. This one is the epithelium. And the then the one below is the doctor. Okay. So this is a common area we usually must take. Okay. And then I use this view and you will know I think most of the people uh, see with him only okay, this one is the uh, duct, right? But if I use this view, you will know this one is not the duct. Up to the Longus, previous, magnus, anterior branch of obturator nerve, posterior branch of obturator nerve. And then the obturator nerve passes through the obturator for and then divided into two branches. Okay? So if you want to see the adduction, okay, the, the usual position is put like this way. And then you are going to see both all the muscles attached on the pubic symphysis. So again, posterior branch and anterior branch of the obturator nerve. Okay, that's the medial part. And the next uh, uh, structure I'm going to introduce is the posterior hip. So, uh, At the posterior hip, I think the most important structure is the piriformis. So, how to recognize piriformis? Okay, first, this is the sacrum. So, this is the erect spinalis, including uh, iliac costalis, longitudinalis, and maticulus. This group. And this is the e-leaf over here. And then you are going to see the posterior wing of the e-leaf. Right? Mm -hmm. Posterior mm -hmm. wing of the e-leaf. And then we move up more distally, you are going to see the great sciatic notch over here. And the first muscle coming from the uh, great sciatic notch is the piriformis. And then I redirect my probe to let the probe along its long axis. We are going to see this is the uh, east king, this is the uh, femoral head, femoral neck, and then you are going to see the greater trochanter. Now we can do the internal and external rotation to see the movement of the piriformis. And then I move my probe more distally. Mm. 
move my probe more distally, you are going to see several small rotators. For example, this is the obturator internals. Obturator internals. So we can do the dynamic tracking. You know, this is obturator internals. Because you can see the muscle coming from the posterior side of the obturator membrane. Yes. Okay. And then this is the superior germinus, superior internus, inferior germinus, and uh, this is the quadratus femoris over here. And uh, uh, in this plan, is the easiest plan to identify a sighted nerve. So where is the sighted nerve? Over here, sighted nerve. Okay. Why it is easy to identify? Because uh, the, the one below is the up to, is the uh, is a uh, quadratus femoris, it's a muscle, so it's the hypoechoic. The one above is the uh, gluteus maximus, so its muscle is also hypoechoic. So in this plan, we can see the sciatic nerve in its long axis. So now you see the sciatic nerve, right? Mm -hmm. Sighted nerve <coughs> originated from the greatic sciatic notch. Great sciatic foramen and then course above the small rotator over here and it goes to our posterior side. This is the long axis view of the sciatic nerve. And the muscle above, the muscle above is the period bones. So it is brain why when we inject uh, injection uh, for the pericomis, remember do not go too deep, otherwise you will hit the nerve. Okay, and the, another structure I have to introduce is the lateral hip. Okay. <coughs> You see the this is the quadrilateral trochanter and the hip joint is anterior. So we put our probe in this way. Okay. This is our posterior hip joint. And you are going to see the femur head over here, this neck, and this is the quadrilateral region. And in this plane there are three muscles there. The first mm -hmm. one is the tensor basolata. Second one is the gluteus, gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus. And then if you move your probe more distally, more distally, twist. You are going to see the gluteus medius tendon inserted on the <coughs> Where the tubercle, where the trochanter, and the, but, uh, the tensor fascial artery will cause more distally to insert on the gladius tubercle. It's better to use the linear probe to identify both uh, fascial layer. So you can see the above one is the tensor fascial artery. It's the, actually, it's the iliotibial tibia band. Tensor basal artery merge with the gluteus maximus. And then, then you can see it go this tolly, this tolly to insert on our gladius tubercle. So, if for the patient with snapping hip, what you are going to do is to you know, relocate your probe in this direction and ask the patient to do the hip. Pressure and the extension. Yes, the extension. Fine. Okay, you can ask him to do. You can do it yourself. One, one, one. 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 One,
so you can see the gliding. So if the gliding is not smooth, sometimes we may call it a uh, snapping hip. Okay. But uh, why uh, we have to test in this way? In this plan, if he extends his knee, the uh, tensor fashion, the iliotibial trait and the gluteal medius will be in the same plane. But when you flex, because uh, the iliotibial plane insert on the girly tubercle, it will run anterior to the greater trochanter. But the gluteal medius will stay the same. So you are going to see both things rubbing mm -hmm. each other. Okay? It's all. Mm -hmm.